Shalom. Call Halayim Hayalaya. How will by Hashem Yahushai? What I just said was all praises be to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. Double honest to our apostles, a great millstone that we will honor and diligence. Honest to you, brothers out there, pushing the truth and love and sincerity to, to wake up the elect. Peace and blessings be multiplying to the elect. Wa Mashapachem and their families. Uh, um. Honest to the sisters out there that's taking this truth seriously, calling on the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and believing in the whole truth, you know, and living it, you know. Um, you know, and I want to give a special, you know, honor out to the apostles who taught me this information, you know, this breakdown, you know, and it taught me the truth, you know. The apostles are great real stone. And, um, uh, you know, we hope to follow that same uh, example of diligence, you know, that they show us daily. You know, uh, pardon me, I'm a little under the weather, you know. Um, you know, uh, Lord's will, you know, I'm able to get this done with no interruptions. You know, uh, man, this is like my third my fourth time trying to do this video. Satan has really been trying to hinder me. It's been an all week thing, you know, with him trying to hinder me. But I'm um, just going to go in the spirit and just, you know, keep fighting, man. That's all we can do. Keep fighting, man. You know, even through even through your affliction, man, the Lord, the Lord loves it when you fight even through your afflictions, man. You know, you know, the Lord really blesses us for that. So we got to continue to fight, you know. Regardless of whatever, you know, we're going through, you know, um, my prayers are with you all, you know, uh, you elect members, and um, hopefully we make it on the first go round, you know, but um, without further ado, I'm going to get into this Daniel, the seventh chapter, I'm just going to go over verses one through five tonight, it's going to cover a lot of information, you know, but hopefully... So like, hopefully, um, you know, it's helpful and, uh, hopefully, you know, the spirit lead me and guide me to edify you, Akim, you know, so without further ado, this is Daniel seven, chapter seven and verse one, it says in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream. And told the sum of the matter. So basically, this is a prophecy. You know, this dream is a is a prophecy of past and future events. You know, to have it because this prophecy that he's gonna he's gonna foretell. You know, it started before he wrote it, and it ended after he died. You know, and it's still going on today. You know. It says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. You know, and the, the four winds are the, the winds of the north, south, east, and west. You know, and the great sea is talking about the Mediterranean Sea. You know, and um, the reason why I say that is because all these kingdoms that are going to rise up were centered around the Mediterranean Sea. You know, in which um, you know, that's the image of the Mediterranean Sea. It looks like an ant land on its back, almost. <laughs> but that's the Mediterranean Sea, and all these kingdoms are going to be mentioned. You know, that rose up are are, are, are touching the Mediterranean Sea, or centered around this area. You know. It says, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, you know. And um, I believe that's talking about, um, well, I know <laughs> that that's talking about uh, Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar, you know. And I, I know, you know, it's, the Lord always puts clues out there, you know. For you to find out what, what things are talking about. 
But, you know, the reason why I say in Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar was the king that made Babylon great. You know, he was that king that, uh, 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 you know, that, 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 that ruled in the height of Babylon's, uh, 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 um, uh, in in the height in the peak of its uh, 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 um, excellency, you know. It says, uh, "And the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings." Okay, and another thing, the reason why I, 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 I um, think this is speaking about Nebuchadnezzar too, you know, because this is Nebuchadnezzar had a throne room, and look, there's lions. In the throne room. And as a matter of fact, um, when when Darius, hold on, let me go back. There's another one in the hall, you know, a lion, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, when the, the lion's den that Darius through Daniel in belonged to Nebuchadnezzar, you know, originally. I mean, you know, well, Belshazzar, it was passed down from Nebuchadnezzar, though, you know. So, um, it says, uh, it says, and had, and had eagle's wings. It says, and I, be, I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked up, you know, and um, the, the the lion had eagle's wings, is you know, it says, and, and I beheld the, the wings thereof were plucked up. That's talking about Assyria, because what had happened was, you know, the Assyrians, you know, how, how, how Babylon took over Assyria, the Assyrians were, were having... We're, we're fighting little skirmishes with, you know, people whose land they had took, the, the Armenians, you know. You know, and, and and those Armenians, you know, that was their land and they they, they had they had a, a knowledge of that terrain and they was they was putting they was putting them Assyrians to work out there, man, in the field. They was putting them to work and they, and they lost a lot of assets fighting those Armenians. You know, mainly in the the major war, which was called uh, Quarqua, it lasted eight years, man. From eight fifty four BC to eight forty six BC. You know, so they was out there fighting for eight years straight. You know, if you can imagine, back in that time, they didn't have planes or cars to 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 bring new soldiers. You know, they had to ride horseback, man. So you go, can you imagine? You know, you fighting and fighting and fighting, and it take months. It may take months for you to get a fresh supply of troops. It may take a long time for you to get food sent to you out there. You know, uh, fresh clothes. You know, so you know it. You know it. It was. It was. It was wearying, man. Out there on the battlefield, man. You out there swinging your sword. You barely. You know. You got them to build a city out there while you lit while you out there at the border. You know, it was an eight year war, and those people were those people were hand, handing them they asked to them, man. But they were eventually taken over, you know. But those people, they the Syrians lost a lot of assets during that eight year span, you know. You know. And it says, uh, and I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, you know, and that, that plucked was means basically when the, when the, when the Assyrians, when they came back from that eight year battle, you know, the Babylonians just came in and took their shit, just came in and took their shit, man. It wasn't even a battle. It wasn't even a war. The, the soldiers were demoralized, you know. They just they just gave up the kingdom like okay f uh, we not gonna fight you too, you know. So Nebuchadnezzar just came in. He just waited till they got done and came in and took their shit like you know, he annexed it. 
you know. It says, and it was lifted up from the earth, you know, and that's when, that's when uh, um, Babylon came into the height of of, of its uh, superiority, man. When it took Assyria, man, it, that's when it came into the height of its rule, you know, under Nebuchadnezzar, you know. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar basically came, came like a god to those people, man. Those people worshipped that man. You know, all except for Daniel, <laughs> you know, but Daniel treated the man with respect, man, because, you know, hey, he could, you know, at any, you know, he was wise, man, you know, that's a king, man, you, you got to use wisdom, you know, scriptures say a soft answer turned away wrath, man, but when you read about it in the fourth chapter, you know, uh, uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him, man, you know, about a tree. That was gonna be hacked down, and, and it was talk. And, and, and Daniel told him, "Hey, that's talking about you, man. You about to you about to lose power, you know." And um, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, basically said, "Man, I, I I built all this shit up, you know. Talking about I'm gonna lose power. Who who did this? I did this for my Majesty." And while he was speaking, the Lord threatened his ass. He said, "A voice came out of heaven and said, man, you gonna lose you you." <laughs> The Lord basically cussed his ass out, man. Let me, let me go and see if I can get that part, man. Because uh, while he was talking his shit, man. Verse 30, Daniel 4 and 30 said, The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the for the house of the kingdom of by by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Verse 31, it says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. <laughs> so the Lord said, nigga, you tough. Now you ain't got nothing. All you got to do is humble yourself, man. Give my people their shit back. You know, Nebuchadnezzar had sacked, you know, the the temple, man, and took all the all the all the the, the goodly things out of the temple, man. You know, and all he had to do was, hey, the Lord raised them up in power. All you had to do is give 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 get the Israelites their shit back, let them, you know, leave them alone, man. But he didn't want to do it. You know, he he got puffed up. So what happened to him, man? He ended up crawling on all fours like a beast, growing hair all over, with claws and shit. Eating grass, you know, and when the people saw their king, man, become going to a lower state, man, those people in Babylon, they started rioting, man, you know, you know, as is the king, as as is the people, man, those people, those people started rioting, man, and fucking acting crazy, man. And the next kings, you know, because you seen you seen this man that come into great power and rulership, man. And then he just lose power like that. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, he on all fours. You know, you got to imagine the, 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 the economy took a hit, you know. The, the uh, 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 you know, things weren't moving like they like they used to. You know, that, that kingdom started losing power. And those people went the fuck off, man. You know? Those people snap, you know, but, um, you know, several kings rose up, you know, after, after Nebuchadnezzar, but, you know, they, they, they got tired of not having order, man, you know, they got tired and they, they left, you know, they was like, these niggas crazy, they rioting, I don't feel like dealing with this shit, and they walked off, you know. And um, the last one of those kings was uh, Nebonidus, the father of Belshazzar, man. You know, and and Nebonidus, he got you know he got the people in somewhat in order, you know, for a little while. But you know, after that, you know, they was worshiping the god called Marduk, and uh, 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 uh 
ne- uh, Nebonitis, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Nebonitis uh, uh, changed their god, man. It changed their god to uh, uh, the, the moon god uh, called Sin. S-I-N, the moon god Sin. And the people started rioting again, man. <laughs> and it was the Lord that really did it. The people started rioting again, man. They got mad again, all over again. And they didn't respect him for that, man. Every time he spoke, the people were like, ah, I don't want to hear this, you know. So he lost, he lost respect, you know, and, and, and he, he, you know, he thought he, he was gaining, you know, confidence with the people. So basically, Nebonitis, man, he, he, he didn't want, he didn't want his name to be tarnished. So this guy goes and um, goes out on an archaeological dig, <laughs> you know, the, it's supposed to be the first archaeological dig, you know, because he wanted to accomplish something that would uh, uh, ring his name out through the ages, you know. But don't nobody know this, this fucking guy, you know, devil, don't nobody know this guy, you know. But um, he went on an archaeological dig and basically, basically left his son co-regent. Belshazzar was never really king, you know. He was, he was, he was really co-regent to his father because uh, his father outlived him, you know. It says, uh, 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 it says, and the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth. And, and 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 made stand upon the feet as a man. So, hey, never, that's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. It's under him was the king. He was lifted up. You know, he plucked up Assyria, and it says, and was lifted up from the earth. That means he was basically, basically like a god, man. He was basically like a god. It says, and made him made stand up on on the feet, cause cause you know the Lord basically just brought his ass straight down, man. It says, as a man, and the man's heart was given to it, because the Lord humbled his ass, man. 